Hi, I'm Francesca Wallace, the Digital Director at Vogue Australia. Our next speaker is the powerhouse behind the Vogue Australia brand, newly appointed Editor-in-Chief and former Fashion Director of Vogue Australia, Christine Centenera. Christine brings great personal style and a deep knowledge of fashion's history and contemporary directions to her styling work. Her international clients have included Louis Vuitton Men's as a collection and campaign stylist and creative consultant, LVMH, Belvedere, Tiffany & Co, Yeezy, Farfetch, Style.com, L'Oreal, and she is the co-founder and creative director of Wardrobe New York City. Her impressive understanding of the breadth of fashion from couture to young designers underpins her editorial stories for Vogue Australia, through which she has styled cultural icons including Victoria Beckham, Daniel Craig, Gigi Hadid, Chris Hemsworth, Kim Kardashian, Kylie Jenner, Margot Robbie, Kate Blanchett, Cara Delevingne, Elle Fanning, and many more. Today, between myself and executive editor Jessica Montague, also joining me here today, we'll be having a conversation on digital media, the future of fashion, leadership, and how the world is changing for fashion businesses. I'm looking forward to having a discussion which draws on Christine's expertise and industry knowledge, which might be able to inspire or help someone wanting to launch their own business. To start, Christine, Congratulations on your new role. We're loving having you as our fearless leader. I wanted to ask you what it's been like to move into your new role as Editor-in-Chief after already being at Vogue for such a long time. Well, to be really honest, the transition I have gone from Fashion Director where I was for 11 years and was very comfortable um, and very happy doing that role to step up to be Editor-in-Chief has been a huge learning curve. I think I've been in the role for six months now and I feel like I'm just coming out of the, those first few challenging months and what makes it very rewarding is um, seeing the, the product come out that I'm super happy with. Um, but yeah, the transition was, was um, not easy and I, you know, I love a challenge, um, but I think what's made it something that I'm super excited about is the team that we have. Um, in particular, Jess, who is absolutely, I want to say my right hand, but is my partner in this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with Jess and I kind of running the show, I guess, um, we have a wonderful team and I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't have accepted the job if I didn't, wasn't aware of how talented everyone is in every department. Um, I live abroad, so I spend my time between the States and Europe and, and Australia and I'm back and forth a bit. So I think having a solid team um, and a great partner is the only way that we can move this um, brand forward. And I'm really happy with how things are going. I think we're on our fifth issue, mm -hmm. we're just putting to print today. Mm -hmm. um, and then you obviously kind of, I feel like you're the, the, the three of us um, heading up Vogue in Australia is I think a really exciting thing for the industry and the brand, not only in Australia, but on an international level, because I know that everyone is watching and everyone is super impressed with what we're doing. Um, so yeah, it's been challenging, but exciting. Yeah. And I'll jump in there because obviously we are such an established team, but to have Christine step into this new role it's been very exciting to see how she wants to push the brand forward and I guess put more of her lens not over just the fashion pages of the magazine but the whole magazine. Um, and what I love about Christine in this role is she's always pushing us in terms of is this modern, is this fresh, is this new. It doesn't mean just the fashion, even, you know, the feature stories or a beauty or wellness story and it's um, that lens um, across all of the pages and I think you can see there's a real um, modernity to our pages especially in terms of the visual representation mm -hmm. since you took over. Yeah no I, I agree and just going back a little bit going mm -hmm. back more than probably 11 years but where did you start yeah. out what was your first job in publishing? I uh, well I studied it in university I did art history and theory and I did anthropology and really? um, social studies. Yeah, because oh. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to yeah. do. And I, I, whilst I was studying, I got a job for the Hearst titles um, in marketing. And so I was working across Harper's Bazaar. And I was there for a few years in the marketing department and then I moved into editorial. 
in the fashion side of things. And it's funny because I used to look at the fashion team from an outsider um, and I used to see them swan in and swan out and I used to think that their job was quite, you know, um, not as evolved as what I guess I know that it is now. And my editor at the time, Alison Vaness, asked if I would like to move from marketing into fashion and I did it. And I guess I learned that there was more to like fashion magazines than, um, you know, putting a model in a pretty dress. It was big business. And I was there for 10 years and then I moved to Vogue uh, 11 years ago and now I'm here. So, yeah. Yeah, no, it's quite a so journey. So she's basically seen every <laughs> sort of step of the magazine every yeah. job as you work your yeah. way up. Yeah, I think that makes you better at your job at the end of the day if you can understand what everyone's doing at every level. Yeah. Including not just on editorial, having yeah. that marketing background as well. Yeah, I think the marketing background has been really helpful, um, like you said, to, to now be in this position, just understand how all the different kind of department works. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And, I mean, Jess, this is also for you. We'll start mm. with you, Christine. But what, in your opinion, does it take to be a good leader when you're working across so many multiple projects, in your case, sometimes time zones, yeah. there's so much going on. What are your sort of tips for being able to juggle all of those balls but also remain a good leader? I think the most important thing that I think is to be decisive, um, to listen, to be fair and to stand by your decisions always but also know that if you have kind of made the wrong decision to admit to that and to pivot really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I think my biggest strength as a leader is that I'm super decisive um, and I work with my gut always. And like I said, sometimes, you know, that turns out to not be the right decision, but I kind of have no ego to admit that that might not be the right way forward. But, yeah, I think being decisive, being fair, listening, um, are probably the biggest characteristics mm -hmm. that I think in a leader that's mm -hmm. important. Yeah, I mean, Jess. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think that. great communication as mm -hmm. well. Um, I mean, it helps that our team is sort of always on. That's just sort of the personalities <laughs> that we are. Um, but definitely I, I love that Christine makes decisions quickly, but she just knows what she's doing. I, I don't think this, this doesn't just apply to magazines. This applies to any sort of business or any sort of company. But... I think she has a very clear idea of what her vision is and she can make decisions based on that. And so you always know where you stand. I've worked for editors in the past where they flip flop all over the place. And how do you expect someone to trust your vision and trust where you're going with something if they don't even know or if they don't even trust that themselves? Um, so I think that, you know, that gives your team confidence and confidence in Christine's decisions and your decisions going forward as well. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, even just something like coming to a features meeting, you you have a clear idea or if you're pitching something in front of the team, you have an idea it's on the right path even before that meeting just because of the good communication mm. as well. Um, so I, I second everything that you say. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. And I think, you know, all of our roles, we work very closely together. We're always in contact about everything that's going on. But we also do very, very different things. So in your experience, what is it like, you know, what's your advice to people wanting to build a really solid team? Because there are so many different roles and this applies to so many different businesses, not just publishing or fashion. What's your sort of advice to other people out there wanting to build a really solid team around them? In the fashion space, I guess, you know, it depends really on what, it, I guess when you're talking fashion, you could be, it's publishing, it's, could be styling, it could be design, it could be production, um, so many things. I guess the, the one thing I think that is really important is to trust the people that you work with or that you employ or that you surround yourself with. Surround yourself by really talented people um, who and let them do their thing. I think that's really important. I think culture is also really important. Um, I always say this. To, to my team in the mag, it's like we're, we're so busy. I don't have time for drama. I don't have time for infighting or anything. So the culture that we've built, particularly over the last five years, is so, so strong. And that's how you do your best work, mm -hmm. I think, is 
yeah, it's just trusting those people, like Christine said, you're having the best people um, in the best job and, and trusting them and not micromanaging as well. Yeah. I think you've got to give people, you know, you instill confidence if you trust them to do the job and you don't have to be hovering over them, you know, checking their work or anything like that. Um, I was going to say something else about like letting them step up a little bit as well, like giving people the space to step up mm-hmm. and giving them the opportunity, you know, to really do their best work and not prove you wrong necessarily, but just to show you that they can do their jobs, but also more. I think, um, I think that's a good thing to do sometimes. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I think that's great advice. You don't, mm. you know, even just as a person, we all have our own managers and bosses. Yeah. You, you want to feel empowered to mm-hmm. do your job and to be given that, that space. Yeah. And I think also one thing that I'm learning very quickly is to just mention communication. I think it's important to I think people like feedback and I think that's really important mm. to verbalise that because I think people use that as fuel to do better work, mm. better themselves. Um, so I think that's one thing that I've learned that's really important. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, I think people crave feedback. Mm. Yeah. And when I say feedback, it's not praise. Like people want constructive feedback. They they mm. want to, particularly at Vogue, we, we always want to be doing our best work. And under Christine, it is always about the work. Mm. Um, and I get... I guess, the excellence there. So if there's some sort of feedback that can help you, you know, achieve that from people who have been around a lot longer or who can mentor you or help you in some direction, um, you know, I think that's really important. Um, And I think it's important to ask questions as well, Um, no matter where you are in in work, you know, there are always people who have seen things that you haven't seen and, you know, it's important to to share that knowledge base. And listen... Yeah, you know, on the other side of mm, definitely. Business. And I feel like we have a very good open mm-hmm. table kind of policy. Um, and in all of our production meetings, I'm really interested in what, you know, a junior fashion assistant has to say. I was going to say that. You always I, ask people's opinions and yeah. I really like that. And it's always someone junior on the team Yeah, when particularly people might be feeling intimidated in a team setting and don't want to speak up I love Mm. that you ask people their opinion because you're telling them that they're valued Mm. and that also that you're listening yeah yeah I think it's really important and I'm genuinely curious Mm. about Mm. what people have to think um especially some of the younger staff I think one it's important to empower them and to also kind of force them to actually think about what they about the question Mm. if that makes sense yeah um, you know, if we're having, we're discussing a, a beauty trend, for example, you know, I'm interested to know what the fashion team has to think about things because you can get so, um, you know, caught up, especially me, as I know this coming from being the fashion director for so long, I was very much caught up in that fashion space that, you know, I think it's important to also know what someone in features who mm. doesn't live in that world necessarily, what they have to say because our consumers are women of different mm-hmm. shapes, colours, sizes, ages, and I think it's really important for that point of view to be opened up. Yeah. Yeah. And we're all Absolutely. different backgrounds. Mm. We're all interested in so many things outside of work. Yeah. Mm. So it's just getting as many opinions on the table and yeah, definitely. lots of knowledge. So I wouldn't know anything about sport if it wasn't for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the residents. Well, we've all got our, our little <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah definitely. Good. Um, and Christine, who inspires you in your career? Who is kind of, who would you credit to be one of the driving forces or, or driving, you know, multiple people there behind your growth and your career tra- trajectory? For me, there's a couple of people that come to mind. When I was talking about my transition from marketing into the fashion space, I had an editor at the time who we still work with, Alison Vaness. Um, she was the one who really kind of pushed me to move into the fashion space. And I remember at the time thinking I was young in my early 20s, thinking, well, she's just offering me a job in fashion because she thinks I dress well and that's like so, you know, goes against everything I stand for and all of these things. And then I realised that it wasn't, that wasn't why she was asking me to move in to that role. She kind of saw other things in me that maybe I didn't at the time. And so she's been a real mentor to me. Um, And also Edwina McCann, who I've worked with for maybe 15 years now across, um, you know, different titles and the last 11 years at Vogue. She was the one who kind of supported my move to New York 
because we were shooting most of our, we were working with a lot of Australian talent um, and international talent, but a lot of them weren't in Australia. So it was important. She saw this and, and I kind of was one who really kind of spearheaded this, but I moved to New York to work out of the American Vogue office and she supported that. And I think as a result, the product was, you know, at, at a very high standard that would have been difficult to have a fashion director in Australia because I was able to forge those relationships with photographers and talent and um, I was just able to be a little bit more mobile over there. So I guess I would say probably those two people on a, like a magazine front. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're yeah. people that Christine's obviously still very close with today mm -hmm. yeah. and who still... Um, you know, both are still involved with the Vogue brand and are there as sounding boards and yeah. mentors if we need them. Um, I know Alison, I just love her creativity <laughs> and I know if you just need a bit of injection or colour or energy or creativity that she mm. is, she's there and obviously Edwina more from a commercial yeah. perspective as well. Um, mm. You know, how lucky are we to still have those women around? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. This is sort of something I think all three of us definitely <laughs> have opinions on mm. um, and there's a lot of interesting things happening I think in the future of fashion as we move forward but especially for you Christine as an editor who has seen both fashion at the height of print and also at a time when social media, bloggers and now influencers are in play what are your thoughts on standing out in the fashion industry today? Well, I think, first of all, I th think fashion has, it's a huge ecosystem and I think there's a place for all of those people that you mentioned um, and it's important that they all have their place. Going into any role within the fashion, in the fashion space, I think going into it, wanting to stand out probably isn't the way uh, that I would suggest to kind of approach it. I think find, if you're lucky enough to kind of hone in on what it is you like in the fashion space, what you enjoy doing, whether it's styling, designing, working in production, working in publishing, um, media, um, you know, so many things. I think find what you love and just do your very best. And I think from that, you can soar and I think that's when people notice but I think to I think what Jess was talking about it, the culture at Vogue is not there's not a competitive culture everyone just does strives to do their best work and I think at Vogue we have the best people in each department and I think that comes from a place of um just being really great at what you do mm -hmm. and being passionate about what you do and not, not concerning yourself so much with, you know, I guess the competitive nature that of course exists, but just find what you love, do it really well, and good things will come from there. Mm. I think it's that simple. Yeah, I would tend to agree. And Jess, on a, other, another note, I mean, we were talking earlier about how things like AI, certain other technologies are going to disrupt, I mean, every industry yeah. as well as fashion. What are your sort of thoughts on where fashion might be heading when it comes to things like, yeah. you know, generative AI? Well, I was talking with Edwina about this the just the other day, so I thought it was really worth um, talking about because, you know, ChatGPT has been around for six months and it's already, you know, hitting mainstream news and changing, you know, obviously the way that content is produced. So I think this is going to be obviously a huge growth area Um going forward I mean it's pretty scary the fact that it's only six months old and already you know I heard the other day that chat GPT passed the bar so um, it is slightly terrifying but, but at the same time what we were saying before about you know everyone who works at Vogue is about the work and I think you know what will happen is there is going to be more value placed on our point of view our expertise um, our experience um, because that is something that AI does not have. Um, and I think, you know, I, I just think Vogue's point of view and Vogue's edit across all spectrums of media is going to be really important. And I think that will make us stand out because we've really been honing in on that voice and on that sort of, I guess, sense of excellence. Um, and I made the joke before about, I thank goodness that 
chat GPT can't style fashion shoots yet, but God knows where that's heading. But, um, but I mean, anyone can produce content. And this might sound a little harsh, but even when, you know, magazines have been um, shut over the last 10 years, it's, you know, the best talent is still around. And I, I don't mean any disrespect to people who have left the industry, but I think the people who want to be here are here. And I think the very best talent is here. And um, I think those opinions and those points of view will be more valuable going forward. Mm, I agree. Mm. And I mean, my job didn't exist five years ago, necessarily. Mm. And mm. the format that it is now, the job I do today is so different from the same job I did a year ago. Yeah. Like, yeah. The digital space is evolving so quickly. Yeah. And we're keeping up with it, but it's also about making sure that you're prepared to keep up. Mm. Yeah. Well. And just have the have the resourcing and the ability to go where it's going, mm. which is what we do have. Um, I love that Edwina's always encouraged us to think entrepreneurially and try things. And if they don't work, who cares? Like mm. we gave it a shot because I think that's where you develop strategies and, and see what sticks because a lot of this, a lot of the time, a lot of people don't know what, what they're doing or how they're responding to this tilt of technology. So, um, yeah, we've definitely got those abilities and I think, again, you've just got to be nimble and, and be able to pivot and I think... Mm. And be abreast of what's happening in absolutely. the digital space, in yeah. technology moving forward because it does affect everyone. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, you don't want to be a dinosaur left behind. Yeah, you kind of need exactly. to be abreast of it, keep abreast of it. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Christine, in your opinion, and this, you know, weighs into the sort of presence and branding that we we do at Vogue as well. In your opinion, what is it to have a successful fashion business in 2023? What is a successful fashion business? Again, what fashion business in what space? Is it design? Is it, um, you know, are you making product? Are you... Uh, depends on what you do. But I think the most important thing is to have a strong, unique, unwavering point of view that you kind of stand by. Um, I think you need to, community building um, is really important. I think when you're talking about, if you're talking about a fashion brand, I think you need to build a community and people will buy your things. You know, people don't want to buy fashion for the sake of fashion's sake. They want to be part of something. They want to be part of a community. I think that's really important to people these days. So I think, yeah, I think community building, I think collaboration, I think a strong point of view, I think are the key things. And I think just being a responsible human being to, on a, like being responsible on a human level, on an environmental level, I think all of those things are you know, I don't want to call them touch points. I think they're pillars of a, of fashion brands that won't succeed without them, mm. basically. Well, and that actually brings me to the next question mm. about sustainability and accountability, particularly when it comes to things like supply chain and human, you know, treating people yeah. fairly. Um, there's obviously a lot of discussion today about how brands can be better, rightly so. And at Vogue, you know, we've always championed sustainable brands but what are you sort of looking forward to seeing in the future of this space? I'm looking forward to more transparency in the design process from you know the who I made your clothes um just understanding what where clothes come from how they're made who made them and then yeah of course just being that that being a standard across the board because yeah there are some a lot of brands doing that now but I think if that just becomes the norm, then I think, like we discussed, being responsible on a human level and on an environmental level, I think, will make the fashion space a better place, basically. Yeah, absolutely. And our last question, that's all we've got time for, um, is in terms of running a successful business, both of you, I mean, all three of us really are well-versed in the less glamorous sides of fashion, Mm -hmm. the early mornings, the budgets, you know, what are some of the misconceptions that you think fashion and perhaps media industry that you would want people to know before they got into this industry as a career? I think you just need to be so passionate. I love what you said before about, you know, honing in on what it is that you want to do and really going for it and then that you're sore because, you know, there are so many 
jobs in this industry and I think you really need to tap into it like what makes you tick and where you find joy and where you find purpose and what you want to be involved in. Um, yeah, obviously it's, you know, common knowledge that working in fashion, working in media is is hard and challenging and long hours and, and yeah, but we love what we do. We wouldn't be here if we, if we weren't and, um, you know, we get to do some amazing things but... Um, Above, doing it for the right reasons. Doing it for the right reasons. And I'm so proud of everyone when we put together an issue because, you know, you don't see the teamwork in the final product, but I know that it's there. And it's, yeah, that's the stuff that, you know, when you're proud of a, a shoot mm -hmm. that happened at all hours and you had, you know, multiple things go wrong, it's that famous analogy of this, was it the swan that's paddling oh, underneath yeah. that looks so glamorous, but all the hard work happening underneath. Um yeah, it's a lot of fun, but we do work very hard. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't. I would strongly advise people who want to get into fashion because they think it's kind of glamorous and you know pretty dresses and you know butterflies and sunshine. It's not that. <laughs> you know, I would if you're passionate about it, know that it's um, a lot of hard work and a lot of long hours, and you kind of really need to know your stuff. And like just said, be passionate about it and um, don't do it because you think it's a glamorous life because it might seem like that, but it's not really. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank you both. That was really great. It was really nice yeah, to you. have a chat and Thanks. we hope everyone's enjoyed our conversation. And that's all we have Thanks. time for. Thanks.